And based on that, I will introduce the main idea of the CSS grammar. And finally, I will show our implementation of the CSS Austin grammar on the software to radio test bed and some of our experimental evaluation results. For the grammar, we first consider a typical module to module table land where Alice is a module attend access point and there are several single attendant clients. Uh, we also assume that Alice will always use all of her channels to do module to information transmission in order to boost the network service. For this pinpointing transmission, we further assume uh, explicit channel signing process is employed within the network, uh, like that of the actual E that was sort of an AC standard. So what this means is that the access point will actually broadcast some predefined channel signing patterns. For each user, each box to measure the CSI and send the measurement result back to Alice. However, to prevent any malicious node from directly overhearing his measurement result, and uh, guessing the CSI between Alice and different Bob, we further assume that Bob can actually increase the CSI management uh, feedback, or Alice can actually increase the channel coming signal. And after Alice acquires the CSI of different client Bob, we assume that zero force ping pong algorithm is used within the network uh, for Alice to compute the chance of ping pong ways and to do modules of ping pong transmission. However, while in this paper, uh, the focus on the analysis focuses on field for spin forming algorithm. The idea of this CSS framework can be actually generalized to other spin forming algorithms. In terms of the malicious node E, uh, we assume they always have the same number of antennas as the access point Alice. And we further make the following three assumptions. The first one is E is in range of Alice. So what this means is that E can actually decode Bob's data stream if there is no interstream interference. Or in other words, Alice only do a single use of information transmission. But because in this network, Alice does module to information transmission during industry interference, so it cannot directly decode the whole person. The second assumption is it knows which Bob actually included in uh, a module to information transmission. So this can be done actually by overhearing the acknowledgement packet from Bob after the transmission, also never control signals from Alice to board uh, transmission. And finally, the last assumption is that it actually knows part of the symbols in each box down in the packet. And these symbols can be actually part of the packet header, for example, the Mac packet header, that follows a predefined format in the standard. Therefore, by checking the standard Alice, uh, it can actually know the values before even the theory. And with this grand model, the following I will briefly discuss the main idea of the CSS new framework. Our key insight is that uh, it can actually know, uh, use these known symbols to compute the chance of informing ways that Alice can use. And then further use these chance of informing ways to infer what is the CSI between Alice and different client boxes. So when Alice does my use of informing transmission in the network, uh, we first know the signals overheard by its micro antennas to be Y. And Y can actually expand it by the equation showing this plot. So here, uh, X is actually the data symbols uh, from Alice to Bob. Uh, P is the chance of power scale matrix, and WNA is the chance of informing wave matrix. And HAE is actually the CSI of channel between Alice and E. And besides this equation, you also know that Alice does not uh, do for spin forming algorithm. That means the product of the CSI between Alice and Bob and the chance of informing wave matrix uh, equals an identity matrix. So that means the HAB multiplied with the A equals an identity matrix. So these are the information that you have. In the following, uh, if we use this information to compute the CSI of different parts. So as we just mentioned, the first step is to compute the chance of informing ways that Alice must have used. To do that, we discover a new kind of attack, which we call it no chance of attack. And this is similar to the no plan text attack. So as shown in this slide, suppose that Alice, uh, suppose that Eve knows the symbols X just made it from Alice to Bob, Eve can actually combine that with the overheard signals Y to compute an adaptive filter WE uh, by using the equation shown in this one. And by observing equation one, you can be seen that actually this adaptive uh, filter WE can be used to approximate the uh, uh, products of three matrices, which are the channel A, actually between Alice and Eve, the chance of being forming wave matrix W A, and the chance of power scale matrix P and Alice. And here we first assume that E already knows her channel, HAE. And because E has the same number of antennas as Alice, 
this edge AE is actually a square matrix that has been inverted. Therefore, we can actually move this to the right hand side of the equation, and now through this no chance we get single attack, it can actually confuse the product of W A and P, which is the chance to give uh, wave matrix at Alice and the chance to power scalar matrix at Alice. However, uh, it should be noted that in the general wireless networks, the chance to power scalar matrix at access point is usually only known to the access point. Nobody else in the network can actually know this. In other words, it can actually use this no chance to single attack to directly solve the exact value of the chance to informing wave uh, matrix at Alice and further use that to compute the dead side between Alice and the phone. However, it should also be noted that actually in a general wireless network, usually even between Alice and Box, they will not use the exact value of the CSI machine. Instead, they are likely, they're more likely to use the direction of the CSI. And here are two examples. The first one is, in order to do one of the of transmission, Alice actually transmits the signal of the specific box into the non space of the CSI of the deeper box. Uh, the second example is to compute a CSI-based password, Alice and Bob actually will uh, first normalize the CSI between them because they can use different channel power when they do the channel management. And you can we think that in both these two examples, uh, Alice and Bob does not use the exact value of the CSI. Instead, they use the direction of the CSI. In other words, it means that if doesn't mean, uh, does not need to compute the exact value of the CSI. They actually only need to, if actually only need to compute the direction of the CSI, and then it will have enough information to break the CSI-based password or to reduce the network throughput. And uh, if we look at the direction of the CSI between Alice and different box, then actually the direction of each of the row vectors of the channel matrix HAB between Alice and box. And to compute that, it actually only needs to know the direction of each of these column vectors uh, 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 in the chance of informing one matrix WA. And because P, uh, the chance of power scale matrix P is actually a uh, diagonal matrix, the product of WA and P actually preserves the direction of each column of WA. Therefore, in other words, it means that after this no chance of single attack, if actually uh, already have enough uh, information to compute the direction of the CSI of each box. Uh, particularly, uh, if the number of uh, the box that are selected for this one use of informing transmission equals the number of antennas at Alice, it can actually directly compute the direction of the CSI of all these selected box by just overhearing one selling informing transmission. And we also show in our paper that if the number of uh, box that are selected for this one use of informing transmission is smaller than the number of antennas at Alice, it can actually still compute the direction of the CSI of any bar by overhearing multiple uh, dollar beforming transmission. And in this above analysis, I actually skip a very important step, which is how it can estimate her own channel at JE. As previously was in the neighbor, I didn't know that. Uh, however, this was shown uh, to be not that easy with uh, different wireless network settings. As we mentioned in the thread, uh, thread model, we actually uh, consider explicit channel sounding is used within the network. So Alice will transmit some channel sounding sequence for each different box to measure the CSI and send the measurement result back to Alice. However, we also say that to prevent any malicious node from directly overhearing this CSI measurement feedback and knowing the CSI of different box, we assume that either box will increase the CSI feedback or Alice will increase the channel sounding sequence. So if only Bob increases the CSI measurement feedback, Alice, uh, it, can act, uh, it can actually still use the unencrypted channel sounding sequence broadcast by Alice to do uh, to measure her channel at JE. However, if Alice also increases the channel sounding sequence, it can no longer do so because it basically does not know the encrypted channel sounding sequence. Uh, but in our paper, we show that actually it can solve this problem by using her multiple antennas as well as dynamic cycle shift um, that is applied by Alice. So dynamic cycle shift is a technique that is employed by many standards, for example, actually the algorithm AC standard or N standard um, for Alice to access point to transmit some network management or control signals and to prevent unintentional input because now the access point has control attack. Uh, and the detailed discussion is actually uh, in our paper. So uh, I will not show the details here. Um, and finally, we use the work uh, software defined radio to build a test pad and implement the CSS framework and try to evaluate uh, 
how it performs in very single environments. So the test bed has the four antenna workloads uh, as the access for Alice, and four single antenna workloads as four different box, uh, client box within there. And other transmission between the access point and the client, uh, as well as the beam homing process, actually based on the H4 ELT11 system. Uh, we also implement the encrypted channel sounding scheme uh, of CSIC in our test bed. And finally, for the malicious no if and uh, um, CSS in framework, so if we always have the same number of antennas as Alice, uh, and whenever if open hears the uh, signals that are transmitted by Alice, if, uh, if we first track the timing and frequency offset, estimate her channel IJE, and finally use the CSS in framework to compute the CSI of any box. During the experiment, we configure Alice and if to have two, three, and four antennas. And in total, we collect over uh, 100,000 rounds of over-the-air transmissions in different indoor environments. So for each round of transmission, we will first ask Alice uh, to do this uh, explicit channel sounding to measure the CSI of different box. And then we will ask Alice to do multi-use incoming transmission, while at the same time, if we overhear this multi-use incoming transmission and use CSS cube to actually compute the CSI of different box. The evaluation metric we use in this paper is the normalized correlation C between the CSI measures at flying box and the CSI inferred at a malicious node E. So it can be seen that C ranges from 0 to 1, and when C equals 1, it means that the CSI is perfectly correlated with the uh, measured CSI at box. So to see how well this uh, CSI new framework uh, works, we first take a look at the complementary cumulative distribution function of the normalized correlation C. And in this figure, we first assume that it does not imply the CSI smooth uh, But simply using her own CSI, we try to estimate the CSI of different flying box. And you can be seen from this figure that the estimation accuracy is very poor in this case. Uh, the average value is only about 0.5. This is expected because when if and Bob are over half a wavelength away from each other, the CSI to the access for Alice becomes uncorrelated. That's why the estimation accuracy is so bad. In comparison, if if implies the CSI stream framework, the estimation accuracy can largely increase. Uh, and the average value of this normalized correlation C actually increases to over 0.9. And specifically, we can also see from this figure that when the number of antennas that Alice increases, the estimation accuracy reduces a little bit. The main reason of that is that when Alice has more antennas, there will be not more noises that are included in the computation process of the CSS new framework. Therefore, the estimation accuracy will be this. Besides the number of antennas and the access point Alice, uh, the estimation accuracy at ETH also relates to its own channel at JE. In particular, it is related to the signal SNR at ETH as well as the condition number of her uh, channel at JE. Here, the condition number is the ratio between the largest and the smallest uh, signal value of the matrix. And in previous slide, actually, it has average sig uh, signal as an R about 30 dB, and the condition number is 1. And it can be expected that when the signal as an R reduces, the estimation accuracy of the CSS framework actually reduces. Uh, but we can see from this figure, actually, even with only about uh, 15 dB as an R, the estimation accuracy, uh, the normalized uh, correlation C still has an average value of about 0.95. On the other hand, if the condition number of this channel matrix increases because there are more computation errors that are included in computing the, for example, the matrix inversion uh, of the CSS framework, uh, the estimation accuracy also reduces. However, uh, if E is actually in one of these unbearable places, where the signal SNR is small, but the condition number is large, actually it can increase her estimation accuracy by uh, overhearing multiple thousand people transmissions and try to compute, uh, combine several computing data together. Specifically, in the experiment, we consider two different methods to compute the different data The first method is called simply average, uh, for which it simply calculates the average of the several computing data sites, while the second method called subspace search. So if we we'll try to compute the most likely uh, one-dimensional subspace that are spent by all these several computing systems. And the result are shown in this figure. Here the y-axis, uh, the x-axis is the number of packets that it overhears, and the y-axis is the normalized correlation C. 
Uh, and here the red curve is for the subspace search algorithm, while the blue dash curve is for the uh, simple average map. Uh, and here, each signal has a null reduces to generative, and the condition number for all channel increases to zero. So it can be seen very interesting in this figure that while subspace search algorithm increases the estimation accuracy when it over here uh, combines uh, more uh, computing that size, the simply average method may even reduce the estimation accuracy. The main reason of this is actually due to the fractional timing of that due to the ADC sampling at E. So basically, whenever it overhears some signal, it will first sample the signal and then try to determine the start of the signal uh, in the digital domain. However, if the sampling period is uh, if the sampling period is T, there will be a maximum error of T over two uh, in terms uh, in terms of it determining the starting uh, the actual starting point of the path. And this unknown error in the time domain or unknown shift in the time domain will actually translate into the unknown phase rotation in the frequency domain uh, for each uh, computing set size and E. And because of this unknown phase rotation, if we simply compute the average, uh, it will lead to a very uh, inaccurate estimation. However, the subspace search algorithm will not be influenced by this unknown phase rotation. So uh, in our paper, we actually have a more detailed third uh, experimental study of the CSX network. Uh, we also uh, study that after it computes the CSI between Alice and Bob, it can actually further use this CSI to compute the CSI uh, based password between Alice and Bob. And our results show that it can actually now compute over 85% of the CSI based password between Alice and Bob. Moreover, CSI, uh, it can also use the computing CSI to launch a new kind of attack uh, in the wireless network, which we uh, call it a uh, static jamming. So what this means is that it can actually use the computing CSI to selectively jam a specific box and only reduce the throughput of that box while not interfering with all the other box if concurrent public uh, information transmission is employed within the network. Uh, and this is actually uh, fundamentally different from current jamming technique. Uh, where uh, all the data streams from different box are treated equivalently. Uh, finally, for conclusion, uh, so in this paper we have identified a fundamental conflict between using CSI to optimize uh, network throughput and hiding CSI from the malicious stuff. We describe a framework called CSX2 and show that it can actually, uh, and show that how the malicious stuff can actually use the overheard signal to compute the CSI of different box. We do the test set and do the experiment to show that it can achieve very high estimation accuracy in different indoor environments. Therefore, our results uh, urge us to have a more careful examination uh, in terms of how CSI can be used as a shared secret to enhance network security in general wireless networks. And we also need to devise things to detect and prevent attacks based on CSI. Uh, that is all. Thank you.